Hello, Pastor Wayne, Prosperity Christ Church in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. It is good to be here today. God bless y'all. This week we're on Jesus Covenant 6. Last week we learned how the mind often controls the outcomes of our lives and even, even other people's lives. We learn how our thoughts can keep us from all that God has for us. We also learn the power of the Word of God and just who our Savior is. We learn that He is the Word that became flesh. He came down here and walked as one of us. If you look at the person next to you, you're looking at, you're looking at what Jesus looked like. He looked human. He was human just like us. We learned that God doesn't set the limits on our lives. We do. Because God made us all more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. What does this mean? We are all made for his greatness. Every individual is made for God's greatness. So we are all designed by God and from God to be part of God. We learn that if we don't like our story, God gave us the power of our faith to change it. Now, isn't that amazing? Animals can't do that. No one on earth can do that. Angels can't change their destiny. No one can change their destiny, but humans have the power to change their destiny, to change their story. We learn the greatest battle we fight is the battle we have in our own minds. It's the way, the way we think, how we think, what we think. And why do we have this battle? Because we let more world in than God's word. And that's when the confession of our faith decides our destiny. We found out that what we think the most about is what we confess the most about, what we talk the most about. So to change our confession, what we say, we need to change what we think most about. In other words, it's time to, to take the trash out and bring the word in. Because Satan passes thoughts, feelings, and attitudes across our hearts and minds. He'll consume us with our problems instead of consuming us with God. So how do we prevent these seeds from taking root, beginning to grow, and then producing the negative crops Satan desires in our lives? We do what the Word says. Matthew 6.31 says, Take no thought, saying, Jesus is saying, if you don't want it, then don't think about it and don't say it. Put your mind on something else. Don't put your mind on the problems at hand. Because in the kingdom of God, if you don't say it, it's not yours because you're saying it gives you title and deed to it. You own it. Once it comes out of your mouth, you just sign a contract for it. So the moment you start verbalizing and speaking forth these negative things, they become yours and begin releasing this negative power into your life. And they start it immediately. <coughs> Starts the domino effect. Why does it work like this? Because creation itself was created by words. God said, let it be, and there it was, and it still is. We need to take on this attitude. I refuse to speak forth anything contrary to what I'm believing for. Why? Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. What's this saying? You can't only just speak life with your tongue. You can also speak life, speak death with your tongue. Sadly, the truth is, that most people release much more death with their tongue than they do life. They go around spitting negative and what might happen and what they don't like and who's doing this to me and who's doing that to me and who's up to this and gossiping and, and taking in more trash and they're taking in God's word. We are hung by our tongue, so to say.
Now we're going to get into today's teaching, the Jesus Covenant number six. We're going to learn today that inconsistency lies the power. It's a spiritual principle ruled through the Bible. The way to release faith and cause it to work on our behalf is by speaking it. Romans 10, 8 says, The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. What's this saying? Faith speaks. It cannot say the word of God if the word does not first reside in our minds, if we don't know it. Why? Because we speak what we think most about. Why say what's in our hearts and what's in our hearts is what's in our minds? When we are squeezed by pressure, what's inside of us automatically seems to come out of our mouths, doesn't it? When we get some over overwhelming obstacle that comes against us, the first thing we want to talk about is all the negative things about it. It's just almost natural, isn't it? Why does it work this way? Because the Jesus covenant says that we can have what we say. So we're speaking what we have instead of what we want. He said it, so it is the covenant to us. It's a spiritual law that cannot be broken. If Jesus said something's going to happen the way it is, it is the way that it is, and there's no force on earth can change that except us as an individual. If we have God's word inside us in abundance, faith words come out. God gives us an answer. When, my, when that item was stolen from me, the first thing that came to my mind was a little bit of frustration and anger, right? I was very, very upset. Not that I'm, no one's happy about someone coming in on their place and taking what they want, doing what they want to. No one likes that, you know? But the Lord said to me, I'm a restorer seven times for what the thief took. And that stayed in my mind. You know, instead of hate, all of a sudden I started having forgiveness for the person that did it. And I pray that they'll find God through it. I pray that this will be the stepping stone that'll, that'll make them fall to the level that they're only going to see up and they're going to see Jesus and change their lives. If we don't have his word abiding in us, then fear and everything that goes with fear will come out. The word of God says in Luke 6, 45, a good man brings good things brings out the good of the stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the bad stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. What's your heart full of? What's this saying? The heart is talking about your mind. What are you putting in your mind? What are you filling your mind with more? And whatever you have been putting in the most of is what's going to come out of it. Are you filling with sinful TV shows or spite and contradiction to God's word and will for your life? Bad music that talks about everything that you shouldn't be getting into? Or are you filling it with the power of God? There is no innocent sin that you're listening to. There's no innocent thing that you're saying that's against God. It's all wrong. The word makes it clear you will get what you fill it with. Say that person has been used to filling it with sinful things. The good news is it no longer has to be that way. We can change our habits and therefore change our lives. We have the ability to change what we're used to doing to get used to doing something else. How? We can change the radio station from satanic and sexual in nature music to Christian radio. We can speak Christian and positive TV shows. We can spend time in God's word. We can take time to pray together as a family. We can go to church together as a family or as an individual. We can change our lives by changing our personal habits. Replace these things with something else. The biggest problem we have in what we seek is what we seek for entertainment. Also, how we treat each other is a major factor in what's in our minds. Try only speaking love and kindness to each other. They say smiles are contagious, so be contagious and put one on. 
Smile when you walk into a store or restaurant. You understand? Smile to people at the restaurant. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what this poor waitress is suffering. You know, the first place is waitresses aren't known for being wealthy, okay? They just barely make it. Usually they got kids at home they're feeding. You know, I mean, you, you need to understand that we need to, we need to bring these people up, not bring these people down. Mm. Every morning, instead of getting up and running late, start running to something better. You're running anyway. You might as well turn that running in the right direction. Amen. Get up a little early and run to God's word and read at least one chapter of the Bible every day. Well, where do I start reading the chapter? Try Genesis chapter one. That's a good place to start. And keep reading until you read every chapter in the Bible and then start over. That's what I do. I read as many chapters as the Lord will allow me to read in the day. You know, then when I get done with the Bible, I just start over again. And you know what's amazing? Every time I start over, it's like I never read it before. I'm like, I didn't know that was in there. You know how many times I've read the Bible? I read it all the time. You know, it's just amazing how God's word opens up to you. You will be amazed at how God will speak to you through his word. He'll give you something every time you need. David praised God saying, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. God's word also tells us to hide God's word in our hearts is to read it, meditate it, study it, memorize it, speak it. We call this renewing our minds because that's the phrase the apostle Paul used to the Romans, to the Roman church. He wrote, and do not be conformed to this world in any longer with its spiritual values and customs but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your minds. Sounds to me like their days weren't much different than our days, were they? People were up to the usual, the wrong entertainment, hearing the wrong things, seeing the wrong things, reading the wrong things, hanging out with the wrong things, and doing the wrong things. He says, focusing on God's values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. In the apostle's second letter to the church at Corinth, we find the answer to the renewing of the mind. Summed up, he says that the bottom line of all this is to put God's covenant from his Bible into your hearts and mind. Put God's word in your minds. Replace things with God's word and build a covenant stronghold that will hold you strong in your spirit and in your soul or, or your will, your mind, and your emotions. Don't live life by your emotions. Emotions are liars. Emotions are false. You can think somebody did something you didn't even do it. And, and it'll give you a wrong emotion about it, won't it? Emotions are not, they're not real. They're not, they don't have substance. And the results will be divine living, which includes all the covenant rights of a child of the Most High God. Which you are a covenant child of the Most High God. That's who you are. You belong to the King of Kings. You are somebody. Now this is paraphrased by me just a little bit. But Jesus says how it will be. In John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? That's what he does. No one's exempt from the thief, right? Thieves come try to get anybody. Jesus says, but I have come. I come that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. How does the thief come? He comes in the dark of the night subtly when you're not looking. By what you allow in your eyes, your ears every day. If you put in trash, you get trash out. If you put trash in the trash can and you go dump the trash, what did you dump? Trash. If you put gold in there and dump it, you'd have gold coming out, wouldn't you? That's how our minds are and our hearts are. If you put in treasure from heaven in God's covenant word, you get out the treasures from heaven into your life. And we need those treasures. We're fighting serious battles out here. There's many things trying to take us out. Disease, sickness, poverty. All these things are coming at us. And they're trying to take any joy we have. They're trying to turn our kids where they're, they're not even thinking rationally. Talk about doing dumb things. You know, the world is out to destroy our families and our lives. The only chance we have, the only power we have is the word of God and Jesus Christ. 
We don't have more power. We have to go to the power of creation, the power that, that's bigger and stronger than all these forces of evil. And that's the word of God. That's where we go for our power because it'll never let us down. Amen. And it's really that simple. He is the good shepherd. Renew your mind to that. I have a question for you to answer to yourself. Just think about this. Does God promise to meet our needs, but not our wants? Does he only pr promise to feed you and clothe you and, and, that's, and put a roof over your head? That's the end of it. Does he just, just your absolute basic needs? Let's go to the word of this answer. The thing that will make you free is found in the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians. 418 and 19. Indeed, I have all in abound. I am full, having received from Ephrodite the thing sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. What did Aphrodite what did, what did Aphrodite do? What, what did he do? He blessed Paul with what he needed to continue the ministry. That's what he did. And he blessed him with more than he needed. And what did Paul say? Paul said, and my God shall supply all your needs back to them according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In Psalms 23, 1, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The key words is I shall not want. Why? Because God is my shepherd. What does this all mean? You shall not want for anything. You put God first, you change your thinking, your words, what you're putting in your heart and your minds, and you're going to be amazed at what God will bless and do for you. He'll give you more than the enemy can take, I'll tell you that much. Because you are a faith-receiving and faith-speaking child of the Most High God. And I know I say that all the time, but when the chips are down, you need to speak it out. I'm a child of the Most High God, and hell itself can't take me down. You need to speak it strong and you need to know those words. When the chips are down, you speak that and the devil's going to flee because the one thing he can't stand before is a child of the Most High God. Who else was a child of the Most High God? Jesus. Do you understand that? When Satan sees you, he sees Jesus because you're also a child of the Most High God. Listen to me very carefully on this. Inconsistency lies the power. Inconsistency of what you do every day lies the power. If you want to walk into covenant rights and privileges, we must be consistent in the word of God. We must keep the word of the blessing in our hearts and in our minds all the time. And we must stand on them more than we stand on anything that we see in the physical world. We must consistently speak the word of God only, nothing else. Because it consistently lies the power in the word. Being consistent is another way of staying diligent. When the centurion Cornelius wanted Jesus to heal his servant, he said in Matthew 8, 8, listen to this carefully. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come down under my roof, but speak the word only, and the servant shall be, your servant shall be healed. Thy servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. That's what I'm teaching you here today. Speak the word only. What did Cornelius do? He spoke the word only. Speak the word only creates miracles. Just ask Cornelius. Because it's the key to receiving that all God has for us. It's the power of the word spoken out of your mouth and heart that will take down your giants. Move mountains, split the sea, heal the sick, change hearts of the lost, and make our crooked paths straight. Whatever they might be, no matter what it is, be like the centurion, only speak the word. If it's ugly, if it's coming at you and you don't understand it, let her preach. She's just, no, she's precious. Because in consistency of the word lies the power of reparation, restoration, promotion, and salvation. The power to change things from the curse to the blessing of the Lord. It's the key to receiving all that God has for us. 
The word contains God's own creative ability. It carries within it the power to bring itself to pass. Therefore, when we believe and speak the word of the blessing over our lives, we release its power and experience the life-changing manifestations into our lives. As we are diligent to activate it by the speaking and in, in faith, it empowers us to prosper and succeed in every facet of our lives. You see, the word of God is, is, not, just, is not just something we speak. It, it's the power, the creative force that changes our destiny, that gives us the power to succeed in whatever we do. It, the word of God says we'll have success in everything we touch, everything we do. Let me ask this question. What are you facing? What are you facing? And what are you saying to what you're facing? What have you been speaking to what you're facing? And what are you telling what you're facing? Are you speaking fear and doubt to it? Are you agreeing with everybody? Oh, I'm going to be homeless. Oh, this isn't going to work out. Oh, that's not going to work out. Oh, the car, I'm going to lose it. This, I'm not going to, my job, this, this, and that, that, this, and this. What are you speaking to it? Are you going along with everybody else? Are you speaking against it? Are you speaking the word of God towards it? Are you standing up for who you are, a child of the Most High God? What are you speaking to it? What's your conversation? What separates you from everybody else that's walking around moaning and groaning about it? What happens when all of a sudden someone speaks faith? People are, don't even know what to say when they hear that. And then watch what happens when they see you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and come out the other side with a full table prepared before you in the presence of your enemies. Man. What did the centurion do? A Roman centurion, what did he do? He said, speak only the word. And then he had victory and miracles followed. Did you hear that? And then he had victory and miracles followed. You might say, well, he was talking directly to Jesus. And the answer, yes, he was talking directly to Jesus. But he's not the only one that can talk directly to Jesus. Amen. But you need to understand that he didn't have any word to go to. And he only had Jesus at that time while he was standing there in front of him. He didn't have Jesus when he walked away because Jesus hadn't went to hell, beat the devil up and came back and saved us yet. So he went to the word and so can we. God gave us his word, his written word to be our go-to in order to find his will about a situation. And there's not a situation you're in that he doesn't have his will written in there about. Once we establish his will, we then should establish our stance on it. If it's not God's will that we're doing it, then we're not, we shouldn't be doing it. Then we stand on it and tell that situation what to do in Jesus' name. We've told many people what to do. Now we can start telling them what to do in Jesus' name, okay? We don't let the situation run us. We run the situation, amen? Yeah. And we don't waver. That's called faith. It's time to start running the situation instead of letting the run the situation run your life. Situations are made to be changed, and God is the change. So I will ask you again, what are you facing and what are you saying to what you're facing? What should you be saying to the situation? What did the Cornelius say, the Roman centurion? Speak the word only. And then miracles will follow. When Joshua and the children of Israel first entered the promised land, they faced the walls of Jericho. It intimidated them so much that they didn't make it to the promised land, did they, that first generation? The walls presented them with an impossible situation, a contradiction in the physical to God's word in the spiritual. The spiritual said, it's yours. But the physical said, oh, no, it's not. God said that he'd given them Jericho into their hand in Joshua 6.2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. He'd given all to them, even the king. But the mighty wall still stood as an impenetrable obstacle, impenetrable obstacle around that city. So what did Joshua do in the face of this? He believed, and on the word of God, what did he believe? Let's find out how Joshua believed. And Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, 
but you shall meditate in it day and night and that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. That's what Joshua believed. He believed and acted on what God said to him. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That's what he did. And what did he receive? He received good success. Why? Because he only spoke God's word. It never departed out of his mouth. Him and Caleb stood in front of all these millions of people from Israel on the other side of the river. They never crossed to take the promised land. They stood two men against millions on God's word. And guess who got the victory? They're the ones that watched the walls come tumbling down. Not that first generation because the first generation wasn't speaking God's word. So are you a minority when you're the only one speaking God's word in the crowd? No, you are You are the minority. You are, you are the one that, that's larger than all of them and God's glory will shine through you. He received good success. Why? Because he only spoke God's word. It never departed out of his mouth. When? Day and night. God's word was always in his heart and in his mouth. To observe to do all that is written in it Seeing in the spirit or revealed knowledge of the book, if it's moving, if it's movies, science fiction, certain songs, good or bad, that's what will come out of your mouth. Whatever you put in is what's going to come out. If it's constantly reading no novels, watching novellas is what will come out of your mouth. And I'm sorry to say that. I know the soap operas are there. But if you're watching soap operas that always lead to sex, murder, and all these other things, and greed, and, and all that... Maybe there's a problem here, okay? That's going to consume your life. I remember my grandmother, man, she just loved her general hospital. I look at that right now, and I'm telling you right now, I've watched it since then. It's like watching soft porn sometimes. I mean, it's just, it's horrific. <laughs> if it's meditating on your problems, your problems will come forth in your speech. If you meditate on the word only 10%, you will only have 10% results. If you meditate on the word 50%, you have 50% results. But if your heart and your mind are full of covenant words from God's word, then you're going to have 100% results. If you're tired of having the 10% results or, or just having a little blessing in your life, well, change your percentage of what you're putting into God's word in your life and increase it to the point of the level that you want. It's that simple. That's how it works. The seed you plant are multiplied into what you get. Then you'll have 100% results, spirit, soul, body, socially, and financially. It doesn't matter what the government says. It doesn't matter what the landlord says. It doesn't matter what, what anybody says. What matters is what the Word of God says. What you're saying about the situation is what's going to matter about what's going to happen in the situation. Quit praying for doubt. Start praying for favor. Amen? Amen. Joshua followed that divine formula for success, and under his leadership, the Israelites fulfilled their destiny, their future. What did Joshua's words do? Joshua's words activated the power and might of heaven's armies to fight for Israel. And they delivered a decisive victory over the heavily fortified city of Jericho. But the battle with Jericho wasn't the real battle. That was just the that's just what they seen in the physical. The real battle they fought was the battle of their minds. The first group of Israelites never got to see the promised land because their minds weren't on God's word. Their minds were on defeat. But the second group, their minds were on what God said they could do. And they not only took the promised land, they conquered the whole land of Canaan. What's in your mind, what's coming out of your mouth, what's pour is what's pouring into your life. Are you fighting the blessing with, of your promised land because you are losing the greatest battle, the battlefield of your mind? Is your mind renewed with the word of God? The answer to this, according to God's word, is that it's what is in your heart in abundance that will come out of your mouth. Joshua put God's word more in his mind than the naysayers of Israel. He, he stood against at least a million people saying it can't be done. Him and Caleb said, oh, yes, it can. And he won every battle that he first won in his mind standing on the word of God. He had to beat his own mind. Listen to me carefully.
To walk in all that God has for us, we must be speaking the word of God only. Yet oftentimes we live between speaking the word of God and everything else but the word of God, don't we? We act like the people James was correcting when he said, James 3, 10 through 12, out of the same mouth proceed blessing and curses. My brethren, these things ought not to be. So they face the same problems we had, the same battles, the same conversations. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grape tree bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. God's word are the bedrock of the covenant we have with him. They are alive and filled with themselves. God's word are spiritual triggers that bring the supernatural into the natural. They are filled with life, health, Blessing, prosperity, they are the code to the universe. They are the code, the secret to anything that you want and desire. That's the secret is God's word. They are the expression of his thoughts and innermost being. Bringing the essence of himself into the human language. You want to hear something that's absolutely miraculous? Think about this. He enabled his language to be spoken by our language. God enabled his language to be spoken by our language. Just imagine the magnitude of that. What does this mean to us? This means power to us. This means victory. This means we can have the language of God in our hearts and our minds and can speak it out of our mouths to have victory over this world. We don't have to be defeated. We can have victory. How? What did, Josh, what did, what did he tell Joshua? We are to meditate on his word day and night, and then we will have good success. You wonder why you're not having good success? Maybe you're not meditating day and night on the word of God. You're not claiming his word over what the world's telling you. It's about change. That's what this whole message is about. It's about changing our bad habits to good habits. Changing our old habits to God's habits. If we will change our lifestyles to accommodate God all the time, not just when we feel like it, or when it's convenient or when it's popular. He will accommodate us through his word, the power of his word. He is the most high God and we are the covenant children of the most high God. Isn't it time for us to start acting and living like, like we're part of this? God's love is infinite. What does that mean? It means that his blessing for us is also infinite. There's no limits, the limits are ours. We set our limits. So shouldn't our lives be infinite in him in actions and words? If you're tired of your life, write a new story. God's here to say today that the story's available to you. You can change your story. It can change right now. We serve a supernatural God that wants us to live a supernatural, prosperous, blessed life. A lifestyle that puts us up, not down. He didn't say, I got rotten fruit for you in the promised land. He says, I got great fruit for you in the promised land. The lifestyle full of favor and blessings, not curses and disappointments over and over. That's the enemy. God said, I got houses for you that you did not build. Amen. Furnished, ready to go. Gardens you did not plant. Hallelujah. Springs building up on the ground with good water. Not this bitter stuff. You've been getting everywhere else you're going. My water is not bitter. It's the good stuff. You drink my water, it's everlasting life. It's time to rise up a new generation of warriors. We are the warriors. We have to rise them up. That baby's the future generation. These children back here are future generation of warriors. We must set an example. It is time to change things. It's time to explain in our families who Jesus is instead of just walking gently by him because we don't want to stir nothing up. I'm going to tell you right now, either you stir it up or hell's going to stir it up. Do you want them blessed or condemned? It's up to you. But we have to change this destiny. We have to speak up for what's right, what's precious, and what's beautiful, and who Jesus is. It's time to really be all that we can be in the kingdom of God. It's time to do this completely day and night, morning and evening. Serve the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ, with all our hearts, not just part of them. It's time to change our story because the story that we tell ourselves is a story that will come to pass. So let's start telling ourselves God's story. 
Let's change our story to what he has for us. Always remember that our God is the God of the possible that makes the impossible possible for you. So expect a miracle every day. Expect a miracle this day in your life. Always expect God's best in your life and you will receive God's best. And quit speaking what you don't want. Start speaking only what you do want. And always know that God loves you and I love you. If no one's told you that you're loved today, I'm telling you right now, I love you. Okay? And God loves you. If you don't know Jesus or just fallen away, please repeat these few powerful words after me now. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you into my heart. I now make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.